All right, thank you very much, and a warm welcome to everyone. Uh, yeah, I'm here in Ames, Iowa, and it's kind of cloudy and cold and windy. But uh, we're coming into the holiday season, so uh, lest I forget, happy holidays, everyone. <laughs> All right, yes, my favorite reading material is the Federal Register. Uh, it's almost overwhelming. Now, today we're going to be looking at primarily the uh, Federal Register uh, related to the Medicare physician fee schedule. Now, I'll have to... Uh, Towards the very end, I'll have to bring in the Federal Register uh, relative to the Outpatient Prospective Payment System, APCs, as well briefly when we get to the uh, Section 603 Provider-Based Clinics. But for the most part, we're going to be talking about the uh, Medicare physician fee schedule. And as I will note in the notes, it is interesting that uh, they have broken out the uh, MACRA MIPS, the uh, Merit Incentive uh, Payment System. They've broken that out into a separate federal register, which is almost, well, almost 700 pages long, everyone. So if we take that federal register plus this one, we've got 1,000 pages of federal register stuff. And that's a technical term. All right, so we're going to be covering a lot today. This is an overview workshop. We don't have any choice with that. There are just too many things going on. All right, so on the uh, title slide, not very much interesting here. Uh, about two-thirds of the way down on the left is my email address. Now, if you should uh, have a question that is a little more complex, need to give me some background, might possibly infringe upon a compliance issue of some sort, uh, then please email me that question. I may or may not have the answer. I wish I had all the answers. I have some. I'm not sure that I have all. Uh, but please feel free to email me. Uh, it may take me a couple of days to get back to you. A little bit behind on my emails right now, but uh, I'll catch up as quickly as possible. All right. Slide number two is a disclaimer. Uh, it, I'll summarize it. We're in a complex area, and I'm going to give you some information today. And the information I'm going to give to you is, is as good as I can give to you. Okay, I'll give you my best. But obviously, you should read the Federal Register, you should read transmittals, you should read sub-regulatory guidance. If you have questions, and I know we'll run into this in the, the telehealth area, uh, if you have questions about coding and billing in that area and you don't have any answers and the transmittals don't seem to address it, then uh, by all means, get a hold of your Medicare administrative contractor for guidance. They may or may not be able to give it to you, but uh, nonetheless, you should contact them to see if you can get some additional guidance. What it boils down to is that you need multiple resources saying the same thing about a particular question or topic or issue, whatever it happens to be. All right, slide number three. Well, you can read a little bit about me if you wish. Yes, I write, I travel, I consult. I, I'm even an expert witness in court from time to time. That's always an interesting process, to say the least. Things are getting more complex every day. Now, the couple of things that scare me about these federal registers is, number one, there are a lot of acronyms. As a matter of fact, if you go towards the beginning of the Federal Register entry, you'll find a listing of acronyms. And oftentimes, this listing is more than one page long at this juncture. OK? I mean, the number of acronyms running around is enormous. And uh, sometimes you have to stop and look them up and figure out exactly what they are. The other thing that kind of scares me about these Federal Registers are the context. There are dozens of people 
at CMS that you can contact relative to any given issue. Unfortunately, I'm not sure that these uh, contact people always communicate with each other. In other words, uh, they have drilled down into their particular little area, and they're an expert at that. But that's it. They do not have any overall expertise. I'm sure there are exceptions to that, but nonetheless, uh, this is a concern that I have. All right, slide number four. What are our objectives today? Well, we're going to cover just as much as we can. Now, I'm going to assume that you have some background relative to the Medicare physician fee schedule. I have a couple of review slides. We will go through those fairly quickly. We have a lot of slides today, as a matter of fact. Uh, and we'll start talking about some of the changes, the uh, evolution of the Medicare physician fee schedule. And over about the last decade, we've really jumped off the quality reporting side of things. We're moving away from uh, automatically increasing payments each year, and we'll talk about that a little bit. But we're going to have to delimit what we discuss uh, because there simply is too much. As an example, the global surgical package, the 10-day, 90-day post-op procedures, they, they, CMS, are doing away with GSP. Well, they just started collecting data July 1, so there's not much of anything in this federal register at this point in time about the global surgical package. Uh, I have a few slides that I kept from last year. Uh, I'll point them out when we get to that, uh, that uh, part of the presentation. Uh, but nonetheless, you're not going to find much about the global surgical package, even though there is activity taking place. Otherwise, we will cover just as much material as we possibly can. Now, uh, a word to the wise about uh, the um, fourth bullet down. Review proposed changes in RVUs, the relative LU units, for selected physician specialties. Now, we won't have time to do that. What I'm going to say to you is this.